All right, good evening, good evening, and welcome to Let's Talk Destiny talk show. Tonight, I am so honored to have my very special guest tonight, um, Tamu White, and she's going to share with us tonight her experience um, with arriving at this next level on her journey. As I've been saying this month, our theme for this month is novel emergence with divine purpose. And uh, basically that means new beginnings, but um, a lot of times during the month of August, we hear people refer to the eighth month as the month of new beginnings or new horizons. And I wanted to just dig a little deeper into that um, this month because I think it's a lot more to it than just saying, um, I'm having a new beginning. I think we need to understand the process of that new emergence. And so this tonight, we are so blessed. I mean, really blessed to have Tamu with us because um, just watching her grow and develop has been such an inspiration to so many people. So tonight we welcome to our platform for the very first time, Tamu White. Welcome, evening, darling. Everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Awesome. So Tamu, before, you know, let's get this thing started. Tell us a little bit about you. Like, what do you like to do? What are your hobbies? What are your passions? Okay, so honestly, I love to travel. If anybody would uh, be able to say anything about me as they watch me on Facebook. I love to travel. I've been traveling since I was three years old. And so, um, yeah, I love new places, new destinations. I just love to get in my car, drive, get on an airplane. It doesn't matter. I'm out. And turning 50 this year, I made a promise to myself beginning January that each month I was going to take a vacation. And so, so far I've been to North Carolina, South Carolina, I've been to Jamaica, I've been to Punta Cana, um, Maryland, just, it just every month, it, it, whether it's a short trip or somewhere I'm driving or somewhere I'm flying. But the biggest thing this year is in November, I'm going to a place that I've never been before, going to Hawaii. Awesome. I'm excited about that. And, um. I'm not taking my bill money to do it. Right, now. <laughs> Nobody blessed me with money. It was something that I endeavored to do. So I'm working Amazon part-time <laughs> to get the necessary funds to have paid my paid vacation and have some spending money. So I'm working for this, but I'm working to enjoy. That's powerful. And, and that plays right into that goes along right along with what we're going to be talking about tonight, how we enter different phases of our life journey. And each phase has a purpose and teaches us lessons. And when we come through that, we come through uh, with another level of excitement. And I can hear the excitement in your voice. And when I'm looking at the pictures that you share on social media, I'm like really jealous and um, wish I could be there in my bathing suit and all that good stuff. But um, some days I have just thankful that I can get from the bedroom to the living room. So I won't be doing much traveling with you this year, but I, I'm happy to see you enjoying yourself. Now, let me ask you this question. When I say um, novel emergence or new horizon, horizons, what words, what thoughts come to your mind? So let me tell you what I did first, because when you said that word, I said, well, wait a minute, let me go look up these words. Cause I am, I am definitely one who likes to define words so that when I'm communicating, I know what we are going to be talking about. And um, that's even in communication. It's so key because we might say a word or we might speak something and my interpretation of that word will lead me into a different direction than what it was intended or what the discussion or the conversation intent, where it intended to go. And so when I looked up a uh, novel emergence, so of course I said novel, it says new and original, um, different from anything seen or known before emergence is the process of coming into view or becoming exposed after being concealed or another definition was the process of coming into being um becoming important or prominent and so when i began to think about 
the two words and think about the things that have transpired in my lifetime, I kind of feel like I spent a whole decade in something. And so when you said new beginnings, people, and you talked about the process, well, one of the things that I had to understand is when we talk about the new beginnings, if we're going to entertain something new, that means something old has got to die. Say that. And so I was honestly not prepared for the death of a thing um but i'm excited about <coughs> the new beginning the emergence um this this process that i'm going through right now is causing me to see things from a different perspective um i'm beginning to see how god sees me and i used to think about um when I thought about how I am and what how people see me, I used to think, oh, you, you're weak, you're a punk, you know, you just let people run over top of you because you forgive so easily and da 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 da, da you know, and so um I used to resent how I was, even though I there was nothing I could do about it. Even when I wanted to be angry, when I wanted to get back at people, the Holy Spirit would not allow me but to go so far. Yes. And um, and so I, t I thought about this and, and I thought about now him at 50 years old, finally giving me the courage to be able to communicate how I feel and what my expectations are. Um, because, you know, when you are, when you come from a place of, um, not, uh, wanting to be rejected, um, because you, you, you know, you, you suffer rejection, um, and not wanting to be rejected, you become a yes person. And there's some things that you just don't say. There's some things that are not politically correct, but nonetheless, there's still how I felt. And so I'm learning how to communicate, um, my feelings, my expectations, you know, and even in my relationship with the Lord, I'm learning how to go before him, transparent. The right. conversation That's that I right. had with him has, it, I mean, it's raw. It's not even, you know, it, it's not right. grammatically correct. Right. It's not, right. it's probably not biblically correct, yeah. but he's not intimidated That's right. by, exactly. you know, the things that I say. But I, I, I really believe that this is a time where I can bear all before him. I can get naked before him be, and talk to him about my disappointments and my expectations and the things that I thought. So then he could gently correct me in what my logic um, was yes. over these past, 20 years. I love it. I love it. I and, and as you were talking, it's like, I, you know, it's powerful. It's powerful because I was thinking earlier today, you know, we use that um, cliche or what have you when we talk about new horizons or we talk about new beginnings. Uh, for years, we've heard people say, like a phoenix rising from the ashes, and people get all hyped and excited about that. But I was thinking about that the last couple of days, Tamu, and it dawned on me that in order for there to be ashes, something had to burn. Absolutely. There had to be fire somewhere in the process. And that thing just gave me chills and it ministered to me because sometimes in this place where we are prior to our emergence, we don't want to let go of things. Uh, we think about emerging more powerful with new ideas, with new concepts, but we don't, we don't wanna focus on what we're gonna to have to leave behind. And unless there is a burning, there are no ashes. So we say things sometimes because we hear other people say it and it sounds cute and it sounds, oh yeah, that sounds nice, but we have to really think about it. And I'm thinking about when you were talking about for years, like, you were in this particular mind space or thought process and you didn't really think you could do anything about it because you kept saying, this is who I am. But God, the Holy Spirit worked with you, worked through you even at that place to bring you to this place. And at this place, there are some things that you had to leave in that place 
that you won't be able to carry to the next place. And this is where I find a lot of people are having trouble because we want to talk about new beginnings and it sounds good. And especially in the church, you know, we, we preach it, we preach it, we preach it about the new beginnings and people get all hyped and excited. But then three months down the road, individuals find themselves sitting in the pew. And if they're honest, they are still at the same place they were before they heard the sermon because the words have to have some action behind them. And there's some things we have to do while God is doing uh, what he does. Now, let me ask you this question. As you refer to the places where you have grown from and that you have um, been um, birthed out of and walked through, do you use those experiences as a point of testimony or reference um, when you're speaking to other people? Um, it depends on what the situation is and what the Lord allows me to share. One of the things that I've learned even in teaching um, for years about forgiveness, um, to forgiveness for me is, it, it, it appears that you're giving a person a pass. And so if I am, um, I don't, I, I, know, I don't use names, but I, I, I definitely try to use experiences to let yeah. people know that I can relate. But sometimes in my sharing, it brings back to memory some of the same pain and some of the hurts. And so I have to be mindful that there will be, because the enemy is real. If people don't believe that the attack comes when you are um, doing what God called you to do, when you're walking in your purpose, that is when the enemy is going to come. And so if the enemy tries to visit upon me some of the hurt and the pain hey. that, that I felt when I was going through the actual experience to cause me not to share. And so out of that, like you said, the Phoenix Rising, those things, there were some things that were burned up because of my determination to walk in total forgiveness, like yes. to never have to mention the person's name, to never have to cause, you know, to make them look bad because it was a bad situation. Um, because we all uh, go through things in life and there's a level of maturity that we have to enter into. But I can tell you harboring bitterness and unforgiveness causes so much pain we're doing it to ourselves it's like oh yeah. well we're going to allow this person to have this much control over our lives we're going to allow this situation to have this much control i can't be free i'm sick in my body i'm sick in my mind right. because i'm still remembering the hurt and so at some point in time i have to allow god to do the healing even if an apology is is never given and, right. it, and it's and it's odd that you said that because I teach forgiveness, right? And so the situation that I'm coming out of now, um, the individual apologized to me. And do you know that I felt like that was not sufficient for me because of the sacrifices that I made, because of the things yeah. that had been done and, and what my expectations and desires were. And I was, all, I was in my feelings and the Holy Spirit said to me, the apology was sufficient. And it was just like, I, I do. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, you must be talking to somebody else. You're not talking to me. Yeah. It's like, oh, really? <laughs> okay. And, 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 and so I have to, I have to accept that, um, you know, in spite of it. And then another thing, um, Pastor Kelly had said to me, you know, she's watch, she's watching me and, um, you know, I'm working, I'm, you know, I'm doing everything, but dealing with the pain and the hurt. And that's the key. And it's critical because if, if I don't take time to deal with the pain and the hurt, then I'll end up in another situation. That's correct. Carrying that baggage. That's correct you know, and, and not being healed from it and then end up experiencing those same things or now becoming uh, the person who now attacks, the person who now yeah. uses the person, you know what I'm saying? And exactly. so I'm, I'm very mindful and I take things that people say, um, 
you know, very seriously, I, I was regretting um, the, t I was regretting the decade. Yeah. And, 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 and one of my good, good, good girlfriends said to me, listen, the Bible says uh, one day in a thousand years, a thousand years is like a day in the Lord. He, she said, celebrate the day. I know you're talking about 10 years of which, you know what I'm saying? She said, but celebrate the day. And when we talk about the Kairos moment, that, that God had given me an opportunity to get out of it. Yeah. Because there was a stagnation. You said there's some things. If we don't, we're unwilling to go through the process. Listen, when we think about the story of Abram, where God told Abram to get out of the country, right? But he didn't give him a destination. He, he just told him to go. And therefore, at this stage, I just have to be obedient every step and follow the instruction. He's not telling me, oh, I'm going to give you a new relationship. I'm going to put you in a different situation. What he said was get out. <laughs> yeah. And you know, here's the thing. This is one of the things that I've learned the Holy Spirit has ministered to me. And there are people that won't receive uh, what we're saying tonight, but it's okay because there are people that will receive it. Um, and a lot of times people spend so much time focusing on that dark place. Um, and how do I get out of here? Like they're so busy trying to climb out, climb out, I gotta get out, I gotta get out, I get out. But there are some things that we're not meant to just climb out of, we are meant to walk out of, which means we have to walk through that stuff to get out. It's not automatically, oh, I find myself in a dark place, I find myself in a place where I'm in pain, I'm hurting, I've been abused, I've been mistreated, my love has been um, tainted, I just want it over with. Sometimes we have to walk through that so that when we do emerge and come out on the other side, we carry the lessons with us that we learned while we were there. We carried the blessings. And I was thinking about what you were talking about um, when the Holy Spirit said to you, the apology was enough. And I was thinking about how awesome it is that we have a relationship with our creator where he is concerned about everything that concerns us. Um, this is why if you inter interact with me at all on social media and you interact through, with me personally, um, I have an issue with <clears throat> religiosity because it teaches people that they can't have a conversation with God where they say, I don't know what you're doing and, and it doesn't feel good and I honestly don't like it because they find that, that you're being disrespectful. But I'm finding that he's my father and he wants me to talk to him. Now he's not gonna change his plan. He's gonna still do what he's gonna do, but he doesn't have a problem with me saying, this hurts me, I don't like this. I, I don't wanna go through this. And it reminded me of when <clears throat> my older sister died and everybody was coming from everywhere, praying for her, saying that God said he was gonna heal her and raise her up. And I was living in Atlanta, Georgia at the time. And even my pastor had come up from Atlanta uh, for daddy's birthday celebration. He prayed for her and he said that God was going to heal her. Well, we went back to Atlanta and a couple of weeks or so later, I get a call. She'd been rushed to the hospital. And uh, before I could get back to Maryland, she had died. So when I got back after the funeral, I got back to Atlanta and I was in church one Sunday and my pastor called me and my youngest son to the pulpit to pray for us. And he said these words. He said, I asked God what happened with your sister because that really disturbed me because I know that I heard him say he was going to heal her. And when you called me and said she had died, that really bothered me. And he said, but the Holy Spirit said to me, some things we won't understand until we get to the other side. People all over the sanctuary clapping and hollering, and, you know, and there was thousands of people in there. I mean, this church hosts like 6,000 people, right? And so we're streaming live and whatever. I, I didn't even think about any of that. Everybody, you know, people were clapping. And I just looked at him and I said, well, that might have worked for you, but that's not doing anything for me. <laughs> and because he knew my spirit, 
that I was not being disrespectful or whatever. He said to me, he said, well, this is what I'm going to say to you. I know for a fact that you know God. And I know that you know him when he's speaking to you. I want you to go home and I want you to tell him, repeat to him exactly what you just said to me, because he is going to minister to you in a way that you need to be ministered to. Because what works for one person doesn't work for somebody else. So I just thank you, try to myself on down out the pulpit and work side down. And later that night, I was like, you know, people were, I could hear people around me whispering like, I'm like, God, I didn't believe she said that to him, blah, 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 whatever. So I go back to my apartment and later on at night, I'm laying in the bed. I'm just praying and I'm crying and I'm asking God, I want to know what's going on because I'm telling you, there were at least 20 people that prayed for Sylvia and said God was going to heal her and raise her up. And the Holy Spirit said to me, I heard your prayers and I heard the prayers of the other people, but more importantly, I heard your sister's prayers. And she wanted complete healing and unconditional love that can only be found in my presence. So I brought her home. Samu, mm -hmm. I cried like, but this cry was a cleansing cry because that was what I needed to hear. So what I'm saying is you can get to a place where you need to hear from God directly. You need a word that's specific for your situation. And sometimes in this place, before we emerge to the next place, we get stuck with tradition. We get stuck with repeating stuff that other people say, and it's not working for us. And this is why when you said to him, you know, when he said to you rather, um, that apology was sufficient, it didn't register because you wanted much more than that because you had given much more than that. Yes. But he knew that when he told you that, he already knew that and he knew what you needed. And so you emerged from that not broken, not bitter, not full of all men are dogs, not full of, you know, you can tell a lot of women who've been hurt by men because my God, that's all they talk about. If you're talking about oranges, some kind of way they can bring up some man that broke their heart. But you can tell that you've been healed. And I love that. And this even emerging to merging to the place where you're traveling, whether you have a crowd or whether you got one or two people, you made your mind up that that's something you were going to do for you. And that's a sign of that healing that has taken place. And I'm very proud of you. Thank you. I'm telling you, it, it's definitely a journey. And um, when I do the uh, when I do the Facebook Live for True Sisters, you know, I kind of share. It's like join me in this journey because I know I'm not the only one. I might be the only one that's bold and courageous enough to talk about it because, especially coming from a leader a leader uh, a standpoint because people have an expectation of you if you say you're a Christian or you're a leader, you're an elder, whatever in the church. And, and so they have this expectation already made out for you. This is how you're supposed to live. This is how you're supposed to act. These are things that you're supposed to do, but I'm human just like anybody else. And so therefore um, the same issues that others deal with, I deal with as well. Um, uh, Pastor Kelly had to remind me that I'm a woman because I try so hard to be, you know, correct. I try to be the godly example um, to others. But the reality of it is I still have the same feelings. I desire the same things that everybody else Absolutely. desires. I desire to be in a relationship. I desire um, to have a husband. And it, 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 it kind of still irritates me a lot when people see me um, and say, well, you know, that wasn't for you. This is the type of person, you know, that you need in your life. And, and, and so when I hear that, it's like, okay, but where they at though? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Cause at the end of the day, yeah, I love God. Yes. I know the word, you know, I, I whatever, where they at though, because <laughs> I don't want to keep making yeah. the same mistake over and over and over again. Um, after I went live last week, somebody inboxed me and asked me to give them a call and I did. And they were like, you know, um, I really appreciate, you know, you sharing on tonight, but um, 
the Lord said to me that he told you, he showed you red flags long before the breakup. And so, you know, it's, 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 it's ironic to me that nobody says anything until after the fact. In addition, right, I'm quite sure, like I can't even sit here and, and say to you in, in this process that there wasn't something that we could have done um, to, to not have this outcome. Right. Um, but I, I, I definitely won't live in a season of regret. Um, I'm glad that I, I can say I was an intricate part of another person's becoming. Um, and that for that season, I was who God chose to be able to deal with with that, because ultimately the Bible says all souls belong to God. Right. And so this person is a soul as well. The people who I've been in relationships with who have hurt me, whether it's, um, you know, man, woman relationship, friendships, whatever, they're still considered a soul. Yes. And no, and no matter what um, outs that we encounter with one another, at the end of the day, they still belong to God. Absolutely. Like I do. And I don't get a one up on them because I have a leader position or, you know, I have this anointing or I have this calling. No. I don't get a one up. So the same thing that people are pouring into me talking about what God is saying, it goes for the other individuals as yes. well, because they're still, they still a part of God's plan. And I just, you know, in my disobedience, I just decided to, you know, still operate and function. And God, like the word says, he's going to take all of that and use it for his glory and for Absolutely. our good. And so it was Absolutely. beneficial. Like God, there's no wasted moments. There are no wasted relationships. There's no, that God, we look at it as a waste, but God doesn't look at it as it's a waste. But when he, we definitely need to move out on his instruction. When he says enough is enough, after that, go. <laughs> listen. Yeah. It's every broken piece, every fragmented piece of our life, God can use. Mm -hmm. And whenever we feel like I'm just useless, I'm not, I'm not worth anything. I made too many mistakes. I've messed up too much. We have to remember that God can take every broken piece and use it. And I just, one of my favorite scriptures is when Jesus fed the multitude. And then after everybody was full, after everybody had all they needed to to sustain them, he said, gather the fragments that nothing be lost. Every piece is vital. Nothing should be wasted. Now, let me ask you this before we go any further. You mentioned True Sisters. Tell us a little bit about that. So True Sisters is a women's ministry. It, it started off in Atlanta um, under uh, the tutelage of Pastor Lord White. It was Sister Strengthening Sisters. And so initially it was a women's ministry. And um, once we got divorced, I just abandoned that and came back to uh, Delaware, went back to my church and decided that this ministry cost me my marriage. And so it was like, I don't want to do that <laughs> again. Um, but it was basically, we, we, our core scripture was Revelations 12, 11, where the Bible says, and they overcame him, which is the adversary, um, by the blood of the lamb, by the word of our testimony. And so the, 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 what God had given me was that to minister, to help heal hurting women. And because of my own experiences, and my own struggles, I was like, listen, it's too much. Now, I didn't lost my husband, you know, had to come back home. I felt <laughs> I was bitter, yeah. you know. I was my, listen, don't call me my name. Call me bitter. Call me Mara. Um, and so yeah. I yeah. was, um, I, I just, but I never, listen, but I'm going to tell you right now, there's a lot of stuff that I did, but one thing I didn't do, I didn't stop going to church and I didn't stop praying and getting into the presence of God, but I did stop uh, Sister Strength and Assistance. And so one of the hurtful things about um, the ministry, it, 
was that uh, I used to do a monthly newsletter and I would send it out to all of the people that I knew or the people that I uh, came in contact with um, doing the ministry in Atlanta. And I had sent it to Atlantic City to um, a lady who I highly respected. And um, she took the name and she started her own sister, Strengthening Sisters. And so that that was even that that was like confirmation for me that well you shouldn't do this you really shouldn't do it now because she didn't started it and she's a lot more popular than you are you know she was a radio personality and it was like well why would she do something like that and so it wasn't until I was working at Superior Court and a lady came to work there and she came to me and she prophesied to me like right at work and was like the Lord called you to women and she was just saying all this stuff. And I was like, you know, and I and I started talking to her about Sister Strength and the Sisters. So she opened up her house for us wow. to come and fellowship. And so it was like, when I we were sitting around having a meeting, it was like, well, I need to change the name because somebody else got the name and da 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 And she was like, no, I don't think you should change the name. So we thought about it and it's like, true. Because this was, this was the original. This is where it originally started. That's how I felt. Okay. Um, and it was, and it was, a, it, there was, there was something different about the vision yeah. and, and the ministry that God called me to do with true sisters or sister strength and sisters than what I observed that she was doing. Now, one of the things I can honestly say, she didn't do anything illegal because I only registered the name in Georgia at the time and then came and registered the name in Delaware. What I learned through all of this was that there were certain things that I needed to do handle legally so that nobody else could take the name. So um, so now and here again, we are. Which is an important part because sometimes just because we're doing the Lord's work, we forget that we are in the world and we have to, under certain governmental systems we have to follow. And you know, we can dance and shout and speak in tongues and prophesy all we want, but there's still certain things, like you said, legally we have to do. Because I remember some years ago, I started a women's ministry also, and it was um, Women of Wisdom and the WOW you know, acronym. And I had maybe two conferences, um, and then I invited a speaker from the area to come and speak. The next thing I know, she was having her own WOW conference. Now, it's not a matter of me saying or you saying that only God can use us, but it's blatant disrespect and dishonesty to attend somebody's function, know the name, know what they're doing, and then you take, don't even like say, do you want to collaborate or is there some kind of way we can partner? To me, that's number one, integrity um, as an individual. And then if you're supposed to be a Christian, I, even more we expect integrity from you but you know so that's why I learned the hard way the same way you did that sometimes we have to you know get out the spirit and handle our business mm -hmm. um and because we want to um continue to bless people when God gave you something Tamu he gave you that and unless he said it's only for a season then he hasn't released you from it and right. even in our time of frustration um, time of dealing with life issues, God has still given us this assignment. And like you said earlier, this time's not like our time because I find myself saying a lot in the last few years with the health issues and whatever, that my time for ministry is over. Um, I used to travel a lot. I used to, you know, write books. I used to do a lot of things. And now it's like, takes a lot to just even get from one room to the other. But so I kind of said to my sister, uh, I just like, I feel like I'm not doing anything and my voice is not important anymore. I don't have anything to offer. And of course, you know what she said about that. And then I've had a couple of other people say to me, you have to minister differently, but you still have an assignment. And that's one reason why I started this platform because I can't get out the way I want to. Even before the COVID came, I was not getting up going like I did before, but my voice is still being heard. And so that's what I want to say to you, that sometimes we have disruptions that are divine disruptions. 
um, it's not necessarily the enemy, it's not us, it's not our children. Sometimes God disrupts what we're doing because there's something over here he wants us to pick up before we go any further down the road. So we don't have to see these things as failures. We just see them as readjustments. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. Okay, I didn't mean to interrupt you, go ahead. <laughs> that's fine and so and so here we are um when when we started and i started and stopped a couple of times but um this time i attended um reverend nikki brown's um workshop and you know i, I, I wrote the vision and 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 this time the lord said you do it one small step at a time your obedience the obedience that is required is one small step at a time because it's like if you if show you the big picture and you want to instantly go there you know because you see you see something and you can just imagine what it's going to be and you want it to happen right right now but yes. and for some people it happens like that but when you just talk about when when you're able to minister to the just the one you know god listen the angels rejoiced over the one Yes. And so if the ministry was just for the one, then it was still successful. It was still ministry and it was still God. And so I like the one-on-one -on -one approach um, because it's more intimate. Yeah. You can spend more time, you know, and we can really work some things out and work some things through with people right. in smaller settings. Now, of course, we have the encounters like we have the total forgiveness experience that happens every October and it, it, it's only one day. So what happens after that? What happens after this experience that we have? What happens when somebody gets to a place where now they're ready to forgive, but now yeah. they don't have the resources and tools necessary because you listen, y'all invited me to this one day yeah. uh, workshop. Now what, what happens after that? And so we have monthly fellowships that yeah. we can deal with, you know, some of the things that we encounter in the experiences and in the encounters with God. Um, and then every year like this, oh, I'm, I'm so excited that, that the level of faith, how it in me has increased to just, just the boldness. I'm yeah. telling you, I took this, this step of faith and it was like, again, one small obedience step at a time that in uh, April 22nd, 2022, that entire weekend. Listen, we're going to Sandy Cove. We don't have the money. I don't know who the speakers are going to be. I don't know who's going to show up. But yeah. the thing, because it's what God said, I'm going to be obedient now to just do it. And whatever, you know, avenues I have to go through, whatever advertise, whatever it, it takes. I'm going to be obedient and I'm going to do it because I know that it is needed and it is necessary. He's okay. just, he, he's not going to tell me to do something, right? And it just, okay, it doesn't succeed. It doesn't prosper. I just don't believe that I don't serve a God like that. That's right. I don't serve a God like that. It was something as simple as him showing me. I remember one time I was thinking, we were planning for um, the to get her experience and you know, there were a lot of things that were out of place and I didn't know how to connect the pieces together and some things weren't working out. And, uh, and I was, and I went to the leadership conference um, with uh, uh, T.D. Jakes and what he was having it in Texas and he ended up having to have it at his own uh, church. And it was organized chaos. And God allowed me to experience that. that it was, it was, um, classrooms were smaller so if you didn't arrive early you were locked out of the classroom and you had to go find another workshop to go to it was it was but it was organized chaos and the lord allowed me to experience that so that i could get some relief yeah. you know to say it's okay like right. because at the end of the day overall it was an excellent excellent yeah. leadership conference and yeah. i received so much and so people don't really know what happens uh, behind the scene. Right. That's right. Right. But when they came up, if they never said anything, we would have never known. 
Yeah. Yeah. You know, and so it was even with them even sharing about all of the things that happened, all of the things that went wrong, yeah. it was still ministry and it was still a success. So that's why I call it organized chaos. Yeah. Yeah. So when the Lord allowed me to experience that, but you know, I came back, I listen, I had a zeal and a fire for God. Yeah. Like, listen, this is not working. So this is what we're going to do. That's right. That's right. If, if teen Jason go through something at that level, Listen, this is nothing. This is, listen, this is nothing. Right. And and so, and and so, and so that's what I take. I take my faith with me. And when we have meetings and everything and, and, and there's anything, I was like, no, I don't want to do this, you know, whatever. But then it's that, remember, like God causes me to remember. Yes. Remember CDJs. Remember that organized chaos. Don't say you can't do it. And, and, and he allows little things to happen. Like, the blessing that got, we just had a, a fundraiser because I really want to reduce the cost so that more people can attend and make it affordable. So we had a fundraiser, a paint party fundraiser. And um, even even the blessing through that, God opened up the door that the, the artist guy only charged me for the materials. The building, she, she said, listen, I'm, it's a fundraiser. I'm going to give it to you for free. And it was a beautiful building. Wow, see? <laughs> to you know come you know leave with in a plus you know yeah not the red you know but we 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 have some income I'm, you know god uh i'm god is amazing yeah he god is. is amazing and, and all he does trust. all he wants from us number is obedience and consistency and when we are consistently doing what we do um we may not see it as much but in his eyes, it's like, okay, I can depend on her. I can trust her. But let me open up a larger door because she's been faithful with what she has. So let me give her some more. And this is where you are right now, where I am also. But he is just doing some power for things and making connections that we never dreamed we would ever have before. And I'm going to ask you this question, and I'm going to let you go shortly. But during this process of emerging, what dormant traits within you do you think have come to life? Um, courage, definitely. Um, you know, I, 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 like when I was little, I wasn't afraid of anything. They call I was a tomboy. You know, I like climbing trees. I, I fished. I took the fish. I cut the fish's head off. I scaled it, slid it open. Oh my god! <laughs> you know, I went crabbing. You know, I used to um, climb buildings, trees, and everything. You know, and so um, as I got older and had more life experiences, there were things that I became afraid of, and because, like I said, because of rejection, um, because of you know, certain things that happened to me, the abuse, the physical abuse, the sexual abuse, all those things that I experienced in life, I kind of um, went into a shell. I, like it said, um, concealed, you know, that concealment, I kind of went inside myself. And, um, you know, now the courage now and to put it in its proper place. It's not all bold and cantankerous. You know, I'm not bitter and angry. I'm not out here, you know, because I I, did, I didn't have a defense for myself. Now yeah. I've got this big old S on my chest and I'm walking around, you know, all <laughs> like that. But it's the courage to be able to communicate. Um, the, the, the doors that are being opened for me now, um, it's because, of the not because of my pain yeah you know because people will open up a door for you to share all about your pain because you know oh you know you've been molested come and and share about that come and share about that experience you know but it when they see um the deliverance when they see what they said what they what they coined you know you know my my face has lightened up you know there's certain things that they see different I'm from before. Now I can talk about those successes. Yeah, I'm going to share because I don't want anybody to think that I just arrived yes. at a place and I'm just happy and oh, she's been like this for all of her life. And yeah. you know, because some people will look at you and think you've never been through anything exactly. because you don't carry the stench 
you know, you don't carry the stench of what you've been through. Right. Um, and so they look, they, they think that it's not attainable. So when you can now be relatable and be relevant for people, um, then they're not looking at you as if you're on a pedestal. That's the worst place that anybody could put a person is on a pedestal because when they fall, you know, then where's your belief? Where's your trust? Because now you've made this person your idol. You've made this person your God. I love my father when he would say to us, you know, follow me as I follow Christ. Because if I'm not following Christ, that means don't follow me, you know? And so you don't have an expectation. You know, people look at us as humans as these super people and we're just like them. And so we're apt to sinful. You know, I, I talked about a little bit um, doing uh, True Sisters um, Facebook Live about soul care because Dr. Darius Daniels, I was doing, I was reading his book and I was listening to some things and he talked about soul care. And a lot of times the reason why we fall as leaders is because we try to be so spiritual and as you said, religious, try to do everything right, but we don't take care of our soul. That's right. You know, there's some things about me that are not sin, but I like I like to do, it's not sin, but people will judge you because they have this expectation of what sin looks like, what you, you supposed, to, not supposed to do. And so people fall into sin because they don't take care of their soul. Right. They don't take care of their soul. One of the, the, the things, oh, my dad said to me, we were riding right. in a car doing uh, Amazon and we were talking about um, pastors, like after they, finish ministering and everything like they're drained and that's when the enemy can come and attack and I we were talking about you know that's when your hormones and stuff rise up after you get finished emptying out and so that's how um pastors get caught in adultery and stuff because you know right. as they go back to their hotel and here comes Sally or here come Mike you know what I mean coming you know and and so that's how they get caught up because they have not taken care of their soul there's certain oh. things that I have to put into place um, not like I'm so, some great minister or preacher or anything like that, but I, I can tell I, when he said that I could identify yeah, yeah. with what he yeah. was saying. Absolutely. You know, it's like, okay, now my guard is down because I emptied everything out and now I'm waiting. I need to be replenished in the Exactly. In, 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 exactly. You know, and so I, mm, so there's some things, there's some things <laughs> that, uh, yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's when you're extremely vulnerable. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah. as we close this out, let me ask you one more thing. What advice would you give to someone who may uh, watch this uh, recording later on this conversation and they say, um, I'm struggling to uh, release new ideas, new visions, new dreams. I'm in the place where I feel like um, there are some new things inside of me that I want to do, but I'm struggling to release those things. What are some advice you would give them? Um, well, I won't be religious at all. I'm going to tell you straight up. No, there I don't do things. religious anyway. Right. I know. That's what I'm saying. Like, I mean, this ain't the politically correct thing. At the <laughs> end of the day, if you, I mean, you have a choice. You can believe that there's some things to do because somebody has said, um, um, uh, when you know better, you do better. Now, nah, those are two separate things. We could know better, but we don't have the courage to take the necessary steps That's to right. do better. And so if there's something that is in you that is a new thing, something that you believe that you should be doing, but you don't want to give up because you're, uh, uh, you're content, you're in your seat of complacency, you're operating out of a spirit of fear. And listen, those, those things that you have, those new things will never come to manifestation. If, if you, if you got to let the, some people go, some things go, some activities go, some jobs go, some ministries go. I mean, it, it's, listen, but you, 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 you going to have to let it go. And I'm not going to tell you that it's going to be easy. I'm not going to tell you that you're not going to feel some type of way. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to feel like, oh, the light then came on. You're going to feel like you're in a dark place. You're going to feel like you don't have any support. You're going to probably think that you're crazy. And because if it's that great, 
the greater the attack is going to be for it to not uh, manifest. Absolutely. The enemy don't want that manifested. What? what? That great idea you have is going to bring... Listen, do you know what freedom, what chains are going to be broken when you finally obey? You think the enemy want that to happen? No, nah, he's going to keep you bogged down in relationships, bogged down with problems and issues, your own personal... You Listen, yes. your health, everything is going to come against you to make you think, well, listen, this is too much. I can't do that. So what I say is, I don't say any anything except for it, you're operating in a spirit of fear and God has not given us the spirit of fear and you have to trust God. I had to trust God to know that he, listen, God, I know I could, I'm me personally, I must not have believed that God loved me with some of the stuff that I put up with. Mm -hmm. I must not have believed it. But now that I know God has an unconditional love for me, there is nothing that he tells me to do that I can't accomplish if I but obey. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Well, Tamu, oh my goodness. I'm going to let you go. I have absolutely enjoyed this conversation. I hope I didn't scare you too bad. Um, <laughs> but I do want to say that knowing you personally and observing you up close and from afar, that I want to publicly say that I am overwhelmed with pride for where God has brought you. Um, there were times when I uh, literally wanted to fight on your behalf um, because you wouldn't fight. And I, you know, I understand now why you wouldn't, but um, I'm just so proud of you. And I absolutely um, prophesied to you that every area of your life is going to continue to get better because as you walk in obedience, there is absolutely nothing that you can't have. There's nothing you can't have. And every area of your life is going is healed. It's not going to be healed, but it's healed. And um, the power of God within you is healing people that you don't even know about. There are people watching you and listening to you um, for the last couple of years um, that you may not even realize the impact that you have had on their life. And so I want to encourage you, don't, don't get frustrated. Uh, stay focused with the passion and the fire that you have. And I just hear God saying to tell you to just go. Don't procrastinate. Don't try to figure it out. Write down on paper. Put it down, the things that you want. Pray over it and let it go. And then God is going to map it all out for you. You don't even have to try to figure out. It's just going to happen because you've been faithful. And because you're being faithful, he reward, he's rewarding that faithfulness. And he's also connecting you with people um, that will put you in position where you don't have to wonder how things are going to be done. There are people that are coming into your life that will say to you, "This, I want to be a part of what you're doing. How much money do you need? What connections do you need? What can I do to make this happen for you? And so he wants you to be prepared for that because those people have already been introduced to you. You don't even know it yet, but they're coming in and say, this is what I want to do for you. Tell me what you need. So you just have the vision written down and ready and it's coming. Yes, amen. Thank you, thank you, thank God. Praise God. Right. I thank you for the invitation. I love you so much. I love you so much. I love you too. You know you're my girl. <laughs> All right, sweet. Well, I'll let you go. And again, I thank you uh, for joining me tonight. Sometimes I, um, you know, I've had some people to inbox me. Oh, I would like to come on your show. And there's sometimes um, I say, okay, fine. Other times I just don't feel it. Like I have to maintain control over the assignment that God has given to me. And it's definitely not a um, church service. It's not the whole religious whatever thing. But the bottom line is that I have a relationship with God and, and that's going to show up in whatever I do. I don't have to say Jesus, 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 every other word, but it's who I am and it's what, I, what I'm um, a part of. And so everything I do has to represent him. 
And so I have to be careful who I um, allow on any platform that he's given to me. And so I'm just so glad, oh my goodness, I'm so glad that you came tonight. And I look forward to talking to you soon. All right. God okay. bless you all. Goodbye. Love you. Bye-bye. Love you, Chris.